Good morning, everybody. My name is Kalaluka Kangulu. Uh, thank you very much for attending the conference on the Made in Africa initiative. Today, I want to talk to you about the shaping SMMEs development in Africa. And I want to discuss the understanding of current policies and regulations. So good morning once again, and thank you very much for attending the conference. So in understanding the uh, importance of the policies as well as regulations uh, that govern the SMMEs, um, I want us to understand what SMMEs are to start with, and then uh, to understand the future of SMMEs in Africa. This will create a background of understanding why policies and regulations are important. So what are SMMEs? SMMEs are small businesses. Throughout the world, SMMEs are defined differently. Some will consider the main defining factors are three. is either the number of employees that the organization employs, or the turnover that the organization makes, or the number of assets that the company has. So different countries um, will define differently what qualifies companies to be called an SMME. SMEs are small, medium, or micro enterprises, and they are really small businesses. What um, are the key important factors, or what are the contributions that uh, SMEs offer to every economy? Well, SMEs create many job opportunities. They drive the bandwagon of innovation. Uh, they expand the national tax base. They increase competition as well as develop the skilled manpower that in the end uh, are able to work as professionals even in big organizations. So now that we understand what SMM is, uh, let's now look at the future of SMM is in Africa. Well, the future of SMM is can be understood by checking the World Bank website, where we find that currently 90% of businesses, globally, 90% of businesses are constituted by of SMMEs. Really, SMMEs defined companies constitute 90% of businesses. 90%, we can imagine how many people are employed, how many employees are there in SMMEs if all the employee organizations constitute 90% of SMEs. So that's massive. The other thing, again, is uh, formal SMMEs constitute or contribute 40% of GDP globally. Mm, that's quite a lot. 40% of global GDP contributed by SMMEs. And those are registered and formal SMMEs that we're talking about. If we talk about unregistered, informal SMMEs that are not even recognized well, the numbers go up. You see? That's the reason why the World Bank, the World Bank estimates that by the year 2030, SMMEs alone will be employing 600 million people globally. This is very interesting. That's why it is very important for SMEs to mature from informal to formal sector because a lot is expected from them. I like referring to uh, a scholar in Nigeria called Oyekami in his write-up of Oyekami 2006. He mentioned the objective, the main objective of SMEs as to migrate from informal to formal sector by year as the, ma the main objective, to migrate from informal to formal sector. So it is very important to promote certain things in the, in the running of SMME so that all these good things that we've talked about are able to materialize even by the year 2030. This is enough background for us to discuss now why uh, Understanding the policies as well as regulations is important. You agree with me 
that without understanding policies, prevailing policies as well as regulations, it is very difficult for SMMEs to migrate from informal to formal sector. So what are the policies and regulations that SMMEs need to understand? I'll start by addressing the issue of policy. Yes, we've got two main policies uh, that almost every, or every country has, the fiscal as well as the monetary policy. But I would like also to talk about policies that are brought in by regional groupings, uh, organizations, multilateral agreements that would have unilateral as well as uh, uh, different kinds of agreement that would have with other countries. Those organizations that are formed up come up with different policies. That one we'll talk about it. But maybe let's touch a bit about, let's talk a, a bit about um, uh, fiscal policy. When we talk about fiscal policy, mainly we're talking about uh, the uh, policies that are developed in a country by politicians. Those policies will help govern the running of SMEs. So under fiscal policy, you find that what the governments would do would do be to encourage local businesses to grow by regulating uh, goods that are coming from out of the country or importations. This is where they use the taxes as limiting factors, uh, limiting factors, the import duties on external goods that are coming into the country so that they promote local businesses. You see, it is difficult for, especially in Africa, when we talk about uh, uh, competition, most countries in Africa are not industrialized. So the majority of the SMMEs are using uh, traditional methods of producing goods, of providing services. They are not used using skilled or uh, industri industrialized machinery or up-to-date machinery that is able to compete with outside countries which are developed. The government, though would be interested in importing uh, 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 cheaper goods from outside the country, it is in the responsibility of government to ensure that it promotes local employment. So the government, through fiscal policy, would limit the influx of such kind of cheaper goods so that local industry is also encouraged to develop. That's under fiscal policy. There are a lot of other actions that the government would undertake to ensure that they protect uh, local businesses. Under monetary policy, we're talking about uh, policy that is governed by the central banks. Uh, under these policies, you'd find that uh, really it's about the, uh, the, the saturation of the economy when it comes to, to, to availability of, of currency. When there is too much money in circulation, this encourages inflation. So what does the central bank do? The central bank will encourage or will withdraw the money from circulation to leave what is able, what is, what is normal, what cannot promote inflation. So the, the central bank would sell treasury bills, bonds, all that in an effort to withdraw some currency from circulation. And then when the money goes too low, what does the government do? It will start giving out contracts. It will start giving a lot of works opening up so that the public are paid and uh, the money is taken back into circulating. That regulation of the money that is available in circulation is a policy that helps SMMEs to trade well or to trade in a, a conducive environment. The other policy, the third policy, apart from the fiscal and the monetary policy, the, policy I want, the policies that I wanted to talk about are those that are designed in regional groupings or free trade agreements. So, uh, we know that uh, we have trade agreements in Africa, like uh, the SADC, which could be the biggest. We have the COMESA uh, in Southern Africa. We, ha we have also East Africa community in the East. We have PTA and some other agreements in the North. There are a number of FTAs in Africa. And recently, we now have the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement, which has been put in place. That is for the whole Africa. These, poly these agreements promote running of business, cross-product trading. So those organizations will come up with policies again through the uh, multilateral agreements that they would have 
to ensure that our SMMEs also are able to expand and migrate from informal to formal businesses. There is a beauty of migrating from informal to formal because even the, biz, the, the customers that we expect when we are now a formal business are now at a different level because uh, many organizations, especially international organizations, would promote working with well-established uh, organizations. And that's, I think that summarizes uh, the, the need of understanding the policies. We, if we understand fiscal policy, monetary policy, as well as the other policies that are brought in by other cooperating partners, then we understand the environment and the, policy, and the importance of the policies. What about regulations? The government bring up regulations to really control bad behavior in running of business and pro promote sustainability, uh, security, as well as the rule of law. So, it is very important for us to understand the regulations in the, uh, in the country where our SMME is operating from. How do we understand this? Almost every activity that we undertake is covered by a line ministry. I'll give an example. If we are uh, traders or we are farmers, we are trading in agricultural products, we have the Ministry of Agriculture in almost every country in Africa who regulate the movement of, of our agricultural produce. Those are the people where SMMEs need to go and uh, find out the regulations that govern the business in agricultural products. Why is it important to do that? It is important because if bad behavior is noticed, if bad behavior is noticed in our business, the government can easily close our business, which is not desirable. Or we can be subjected to penalties by doing things that we're not supposed to do. The importance of regulation is to curb bad behavior in business. If you're running a small mine under the Ministry of Mines, you'll find there are technocrats there that design controls to regulate how small miners there are a lot of other activities that fall under specific uh, ministries, like ministries, where we are able to get uh, uh, guidance on the controls. Or if our activity is not really defined under which depart uh, government department or other government ministry that it falls, there are other overlapping ministries that would still take care of those areas. The second contact would be the National Revenue Services. You know, at every border point, we have people like customs, or in other countries, they're called differently by different names, revenue authorities and stuff like that. We can consult those. They will know and they will direct us to the specific line ministry that controls our activity or our line of business. When we do that, we'll understand the regulations that govern, that govern the activities that we do, and we won't land ourselves in problem. So we can see, when we understand the policies that the government puts in place, we are searching for incentives that government has put in place, and we can tap in there to ensure that our businesses grow. When we understand regulations, we will avoid bad behavior, so that our business is not, uh, does not face closure or unnecessary penalties. It is very important for us to understand these policies. So in summary, what have we discussed? We have discussed understanding uh, policies as well as uh, regulations in the running of small, medium, and micro enterprises. We've, uh, we've talked about uh, the importance of uh, understanding these policies and regulations and how they can help us. We've also discussed uh, uh, government uh, ministries as well as the, 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 the bodies that are able to assist us get to know or to promote knowledge on how we can operate in our SMMEs so that we avoid problems or we tap in the benefits of uh, trading. Just as a reminder, there is a lot that is expected from SMMEs, especially in Africa. Because as earlier mentioned, SMMEs represent 
about 90% of businesses. Former ones contribute 40% of global GDP. And if we include informal ones, well, the numbers are very high. So thank you very much for attending the conference. Thanks very much for being the audience. Thanks for understanding and giving us audience. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll leave the remaining uh, few minutes for about three to four minutes uh, for any questions uh, that we'll be able to address here. Otherwise, I really appreciate your audience. Thank you so much.